John. <laughs> Hi, well, welcome. We've got Ed Hi. here, who's a vegan, and you're a butcher. So, yeah, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick. what we want more of. <laughs> <laughs> Are you both available to go to Brussels next week? <laughs> um, do you feel demonised as a butcher? Because, you know, you have high animal welfare standards, don't you? I think, I think this is about educating about production systems and that, and I think a lot of the production systems all get lumped together. And as a small retail butcher who has direct contact with the farms, I feel that I can offer my customers the traceability, the welfare, and also how those animals are looked after and fed. Can you and tell I, me how I, they're looked after and uh, fed? Yes, I, I can tell you how they're looked after and fed. We actually go and visit the farms. We actually yeah. have an abattoir as well. And so, how are they killed in the abattoir? So they're killed in the abattoir. This is not a debate on killing methods. or This well, is a debate on environmentalism. Can you, well, but can you tell me how they are killed in the um, abattoir? Well, they're, they're electrocuted, so they're okay. knocked out cold, and then they... But it doesn't always work, so does it? It does work. It we have vets work, there. Though, we have vets there watching everything. We're even on CCTV now. Yeah all the time so the, there's never been higher welfare standards in this country than there are at the moment and we're wanting to defend those standards especially with regard to brexit and that as well why are you doing we, that in the first place you don't have to do it we we do it because um you know we believe that we should eat um, a varied diet and well, meat and meat is part of that diet well that's your opinion and and but it's and, a fact as well it's well, a fact that we don't need to eat these products so to take the well, life of an animal can, unnecessary can, can choose, never be high we welfare we to eat or these what's it, products. okay okay gentlemen we're going to produce uh, it's all going so well gentlemen <laughs> but what's what um we hear you uh, but what is it doing to the environment? So, the, the issue of talking about the impact Taking of... Taking out the animal welfare aspect. Absolutely. <laughs> talking about climate change and not addressing the role that animal agriculture plays is like talking about lung cancer and not addressing the role that cigarette smoking plays. But uh, British agriculture has reduced carbon emissions by 20% since 1990. 65% of the land, the arable land in this country, the agricultural land in this country, is grass. That locks in 90 billion tonnes of carbon into our soils, right? Animals are an essential part of that actual life cycle. They cannot emit more carbon than they eat. They are part of their part, and that's why Natural England and people like the RSPB um, actually support grazing animals. We're talking about grass-fed livestock here. We're talking about small butchers who have those short supply okay, chains. Okay, respond. Low, so. far, it's low uh, travel distances supporting the local food economy, which well, has a big effect. Animal welfare are better here than many other parts of the world where it's yeah. horrific. But there are some horrific things online. You have to look about what's happening in our own country in some circumstances. And there's a documentary, Quick document, quickly, a documentary called Land of Hope and Glory Online, which talks all about what happens to animals in the I UK. Honestly, but let me respond, please. Okay. So there's two studies. The first study was a five-year study conducted by the University of Oxford. It's the most comprehensive study that's ever been conducted exploring the relationship between the environment. Was this the one that was run by a vegan? It, was but he wasn't vegan when he started, but he was right. vegan when he finished it because of what he found out. <laughs> <laughs> and what he discovered... You may be after this conversation, John, as well. <laughs> Not very likely. And what, he, <laughs> what he discovered is that 83% of the farmland that we use is currently dedicated to animal agriculture. And if the world shifted to a plant-based diet, we could reduce the amount of land we needed for agriculture by 75%. He conducted and, and at the end, he summarized by saying that the best thing that we can do for our planet is to live a vegan lifestyle. Now, the second study was the most comprehensive study ever conducted exploring the relationship between food and the environment. And it said that in this country, in the UK, we have to reduce our beef, our lamb, and our pig consumption by 90%, and our dairy and poultry and egg consumption by 60% to not hit that 1.5 degree threshold rise in 12 years' time. The studies are out there, okay. the information is out there. We have Thank to you. Thank you both. Yeah.